This week, we're going to discuss mining frequent patterns using association rule mining as one example. Um, we will discuss some of the basic concepts and two frequent item set mining methods. Earlier, we talked about um, association rule mining is capable of mining large number of rules. And then select interesting rules going to be a major challenge, and we're going to introduce um, a fairly large number of objective evaluation methods. Um, the subjective um, evaluation is often um, based on domain knowledge and um, applications specific needs. So we're not going to talk um, too much about those, but just be keep in mind that um, a lot of times the subjective evaluation is, is actually more important, even though we talk about a lot of objective measures. Um, as always, we have a set of learning objectives. Those cover the basic concepts. Um, you should be able to recite those in your dream. Um, um, another learning objective is to thoroughly understand a priori property. This property is used um, fairly frequently in, um, in association rule mining and, uh, and uh, um, OLAP processing, where you have large number of observations and the computational efficiency becomes an issue. A priori property um, can help you to um, um, use um, elimination methods to make the algorithm more efficient. So the application of a priori is not limited to association rule mining. That's why you want to understand this property thoroughly. And we're going to introduce two major algorithms, um, a priori and FP tree um, in mining association rules. In the literature and everyday use, you probably see a priori men being mentioned more frequently than FP trees. But FP tree really is way more efficient than a priori. Um, so um, pay attention to F um, FP tree and uh, and understand why it is so efficient. Um, it's a it's a clever um, algorithm um, that might actually provide insight to you to address some of the other issues um, in computational efficiency in your own life or work. Um, and lastly, we're going to, as I mentioned earlier, discuss a large number of objective measurements to evaluate association rules. And we're going to discuss different properties of them, especially the non-invariant property, um, which is um, important in certain applications. So let's start um, our discussion. We will start with basic concepts. Interesting. This is chapter six. OK. Um, so we're going to use association rule mining as one example to demonstrate the idea behind frequent patterns. Um, and however, we need to understand frequent pattern is not limited to frequent item sets. Um, a pattern can be a set of items. It could also be um, subsequences, substructures, um, anything, any pattern that occurs frequently in a data set is considered frequent pattern. Um, frequent item set was the first um, being proposed, and um, a set of efficient algorithm has been um, um, used and uh, um, proven to be working. Um, and we're going to, um, and it has fairly general applications. Um, in um, data um, uh, analysis, so we're going to focus on um, the frequent item set mining um, in this class. Um, subsequence mining um, are also important. For example, what are the... Um, so I listed four examples to correspond to some of the um, patterns that we, dis uh, we listed here. For example, um, products that were purchased together, those are frequent item set mining. Um, 
what are the subsequent purchases after buying a PC? This belongs to subsequent by mining. So we want to find a, um, the frequent sequence of events um, that happens. And this application certainly is not limited to commercial. Social events um, could also be um, um, the subject of study using subject um, subsequent um, analysis. Uh, what kind of DNA um, are sensitive to this new drug? What frequent sub-networks are there in a large social network? Those are all substructure minings. Um, you can read more in chapter 7 um, to get an idea of, um, of, of those um, uh, applications and uh, uh, mining methods. Um, so, um, now we're going to talk about, start to focus on the frequent item set mining. And we need to define a few concepts before we can actually introduce the learning algorithms. Um, item set is a set of one or more item in a transaction. So as you recall, this um, is a little transaction database where the tables here only have two columns. One is transaction ID, the other hold item spot. So here, um, unlike any other relational database tables where one data cell can only hold one value, in transaction database, um, one transaction record holds all the items spot together, okay? So that's the major difference. Here, a beer, a beer, can be an item set. It's a one item set. Beer and nuts, um, it's two item set. So um, you can define a K item set um, consists of a set of K items in a transaction. Okay. Um, because our goal is to mine frequent patterns, we need a set of measures to, dis to help us to evaluate how frequent um, that item set is. So we define absolute support and relative support. Absolute support is just to the raw count of an item set, the frequency or the occurrence of an item set X. So all the items in this item set X co-occurs in a transaction, and we count how frequently they co-occur. Uh, relative support is defined in terms of the um, probability. Um, it is the fraction of the transactions among all the transaction record in our database um, that contains X, our uh, item set. Um, it can be interpreted as the probability that a transaction contains X um, in the entire transaction database. Um, with that, once we define the absolute support and relative support, we will be able to see that uh, item set X is frequent if X support is greater than or equal to a threshold. We call it a mean support. Um, depending on the context, mean support may be expressed in the absolute count or expressed as a percentage, um, the probability. Um, in um, default, it should be probability, but occasionally you will see that mean support can also be using support count. So now we have defined frequent patterns, and now we can actually, from the patterns, we can generate association rules. We have seen association rules example before, and we know it took the format of a left hand, a set of um, items on the left hand side, and uh, a set of items on the right-hand side. Um, the, there is a directed arrow that indicates that uh, among the items purchased in X, um, um, Y may also be purchased. Okay. Um, so um, when we have a rule like this, um, we want to tell which rule is stronger than others. Therefore, we need a set of other measures. Um, again, we can use support. Um, in the context association rule, the support is the probability that a transaction contains all the items in X and Y combined. 
So we used the union sign here. This is union, okay? And we also define confident, uh, confidence. Confidence is a conditional probability that a transaction having X also contains Y. So a transaction, all the transactions that purchased Y, how many of those also purchased um, Y? All the transactions that purchased X, how many of them are also provide, uh, purchased Y? Okay, confidence. So using this little transaction database as one example, we can see we have five records here. Um, if we set our minimum support to be 50% and make confidence to be 50%, um, then we can mine our frequent item set. 50% over five records, five total records, give us an absolute support count of two and a half. So any item set that has um, the occurrence greater than two and five, two and a half um, will be considered a frequent. So beer, nuts, diaper, eggs, beer, diaper combination all have occurrence greater than 2.5. Therefore, those are considered frequent set sets. From the frequent sets, we can extract association rules. We observe that the first four um, frequent sets contains only one item. Because our association rule needs left-hand side and right-hand side, therefore, the only frequent set that could generate a rule would be the beer diaper um, frequent set. Um, from this one frequent set, we can generate two um, rules. Um, beer to diaper, diaper to beer. And we can compute the support and confidence and then compare these two rules. Um, support um, for, we can observe that support for both rules is going to be the same because support basically um, uh, computes the, um, the co-occurrence. Um, beer and diaper co-occur three times out of five records, so the support is 60%. The confidence is um, going to be different because it's a conditional probability, right? For all the transactions that contain beer, we have three. How many of them also contain diaper? Three, right? So therefore we have um, a confidence of 100%. Um, um, for the second rule, from diaper to beer, among all the transactions that contain a diaper, that's four transactions, how many of those also contain beer? Only three. Therefore, we have a confidence of 75%. Compare those two rules, we see that beer and diaper is a stronger rule. Um, so, um, a stronger rule than diaper and beer. So, people purchasing beer is more likely to buy diaper than people purchasing buy, uh, diaper um, that also buying beer. Um, so, um, so we have uh, verbally defined um, support and confidence, and now we can actually write it in terms of probability uh, and how to compute that probability. Um, and here is the total number of transactions. And here for the support of this rule, the support count of all the items that in A and B combined going to be the numerator and the total number of the uh, observation going to be uh, the denominator. So I want to make a note here. Um, many students at this point get confused and think that we should not be using the union sign. We should instead be using the intersection sign here, uh, which is not correct um, because A and B are item sets. Okay, so A union B is the uh, um, is the uh, union of all the items in A and B. So we want the co-occurrence of all those items. Therefore, we should use the union sign, not the intersection sign. 
and 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 an intersection will give you empty set actually um, given the nature of the association rule um, so confidence um, I think this should also be uh, fairly straightforward it's um, conditional probability given um, all the people buying A, how many of this also buy B, right? So therefore, follow the conditional probability formula. We have this probability um, probability of A um, union B divided by probability of purchasing A. Okay, and we also made the the point earlier that the confidence from A to B is usually not the same as the confidence of um, of B to A. Um, the last point that I want to make in this set of um, slides is um, the computational, so we can, we have a rough understanding now from the transaction um, database, what we want to do is to first find the frequent item set, and from the first uh, frequent item set, we can generate a set of candidate association rules. And from the candidate association rules, we can actually use the threshold, compute the confidence um, and support for each of the candidate rules and compare those with our threshold. Any rules that satisfied or greater than equal to the minimum support and minimum confidence will become the final association rules that, that are mined from the data set. Um, so there's two. I'll, Algorithmically, algorithmatically, um, there's two major um, steps. One is frequent item set mining. The other is generating candidate association rules. And between these two um, uh, steps, frequent item set generation is the most costly computationally. Um, therefore, our following discussion will going to be on how to mine frequent item set from a large data set. So both a priori and FP growth methods are all focused on this step. Um, once we have the frequent item set, generating candidate association rules is a straightforward process. Um, we just get the, the combinations um, of different combinations. We first to choose different combinations of the items and use those as the left set of the rule and put the remainder uh, items on the right hand side. And that will give us a list of candidate um, association rules. Um, for the efficiency purposes, not all the rules going to be, not all the candidate association rules going to be generated. Um, and, and some algorithms going to only generate rules that have the right hand side to be one item set so so the so here we could have um, i1 i2 pointing to i3 for example that would be a one item set rule on the right hand side okay so i'm going to conclude this um uh, video um, and start a new video to continue our discussion